right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in again. Welcome to the Winter Circle uh, with your girl, Tiffany. I am joined today by a special guest. But before I introduce my special guest, let me remind you all to like, subscribe and comment please. Uh, it means a lot. Also share, please share this video, share the audio. Um, and thanks again for, for tuning in. I am joined today by special guest, a uh, final two from BB 24, Monty Taylor. Welcome to the winter circle, Monty. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Tiffany, thank you for having me. Appreciate the time as always. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So uh, you've been out of the house for, let's see, a, a little over a week now. Um, Correct. Trying to decompress, process, get back to a normal. Um, and for those of you who may or may not be aware, um, it may seem like me and Monty have spoken before, and that's because um, we, we kind of have very impromptu-ish um, I did meet Monty face to face in LA after finale, and he may or may not want have wanted to <laughs> speak with me. Um, do you want to tell them, Monty, what happened? Or <laughs> well, well, listen here, y'all. All right, I think I'm about three hours out of uh, out of the house at this point, and I think this is the after party at, at Todrick's place and. When Tiffany sees me, first thing she does is grab me by the hand and say, come here. And I was like, I don't know what's happening, but, you know, I respect Tiffany. I respect the game that she played last year. So if she got something urgent to say, then I, I'm going to listen. So um, we just had a conversation in the back room uh, just about how she's evaluated me and my game throughout this this year. And um, also just sharing, you know, how she feels about how everything had went down. And and this is all just sort of new to me because I, I haven't been connected to the outside world at all. Um, so it was definitely something to take in and I'm learning more, you know, as more time comes and, and there's been more conversations with other people who I've seen content from the year. So um, yeah, that was sort of the first conversation I had with somebody who had an outside perspective on, uh, on the game and who's actually been in the game, so. And he said, this woman is quite crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't say that word for word. <laughs> um, maybe. I, I, um, I had not planned on talking uh, at that time. I know what it's like to come out of the house. I did have time to process. Um, I probably was a little impatient with trying to um, have a word with you. And it, it just was no right time. So I did kind of snatch you up, throw you in the room, close the door and say, look, Congratulations, first of all, but <laughs> um, there was this, there was this, there was that. I like this. I didn't like that. And I know you don't know me, but none of this was cool. But I understand if you don't know because you don't remember, but I saw it and we didn't like it. And this is what I want to say. What do you have to say? And he said, I just got out of the house and I... <laughs> just w thought I was going to get me a drink first, but, <laughs> but, but anyway, we did, we, um, and then because it was so abrupt and it was so, it, it was, it was like, um, not so proper to meet somebody. I did apologize for just coming off to you like that. Cause it was a little rough. I was standing up to the, to the stigmas of, um, we won't say, but Anyway, I'm glad that we were able to have a conversation, but then we were able to to mend it so that we could sit here today and just talk about your game and allow you some time to uh, process. And then now you're here with me and we're going to talk about it. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I got a couple of questions. Um, so have you had a chance to go back and watch anything? Were you able to get into the season at all? Maybe like your first couple of weeks in the house? No, Tiffany. Um, unfortunately, I have not. And it was something that I said to myself in the house that I would be very patient with. Okay. Because, um, you know, I think throughout the the time of being in there, like you've experienced it, like mm -hmm. you've had your perspective on it. And also I'm still with house guests from this season mm -hmm. and just knowing that like there's game things that could be going on that may look at me or may have me looking at people a little bit differently yeah. because of the game things that I'm seeing. So I didn't want to taint that relationship with seeing 
what's happened in the episodes thus far. But I've seen, I think, maybe like a handful. Um, the uh, what was it? The double eviction where mm-hmm. Michael got evicted. Okay. You know, they had that on the screen and I couldn't help but watch the veto that I won, the, the miracle that I pulled off and beat yeah. Michael. So I was like, All right, I'm going to watch that one. Um, and I think maybe just the uh, the intro package was was the first one that I watched, too. So but that's okay. about it. That's about it. I really haven't had time to like sit down and watch anything more than that. I think that's totally relatable. Um, coming out of the house, I do. I did the same thing. Like we went with our cast mm-hmm. and we just got together and I didn't want to watch the things. And honestly, to this day, it's been a year. I still haven't finished my season because I just don't want. Wow. Um, it's OK. Like we've we've come so far uh, from that uh, for me that I'm I don't want to hear the things that people had to say about me. And maybe that's me being naive, but take all the time you honestly need to process and say, I'm ready to watch this because it can adjust the way you feel about, about things. So no one can tell you the right time to jump in there and do that. Okay. So, um, talking about your game, did you actually have a strategy when you came into the house, um, Mm -hmm. about how you wanted to play? Um, because you kind of came in, you got with Pooch and Kyle Turner, you guys formed the pound, but I think it was another alliance first, right? Wasn't it Oasis? Yeah, yeah. It started off as the Oasis. Is this an all male alliance? Is this an all guys alliance? That was an all guys alliance mm-hmm. that was formed and started by Pooch, hence the name Oasis, <laughs> because that was a word that he used to say a lot when we were playing bumper pool. Okay. He would say, Oh, I need to send your ball to the Oasis, right? Okay. Like he wanted to send it the other direction so that's where he came up with that name but then as well you know i was working with other alliances that um that i was forming and that i probably had a more active role in you know the oasis was just something that you you never say no to anything right like i think that's like a big brother sort of um yeah unspoken rule like if you say no to an alliance um then you're sort of showing your cards Mm -hmm. So, so you had this alliance formed with them and it's the, and so then after Pooch leaves, it turns into the pound, right? Correct. Correct. And the reason why I think it turned into the pound was because we started comparing notes. Um, I think it was Joseph's birthday that night we had gotten together and said, Hey, like, let's just do a rundown on, on what we think happened last week, because I don't think the the four of us, um remaining from that alliance felt like we had a good idea of how things came to be with Pooch mm-hmm. becoming the target mm-hmm. um and at that point we started talking and i think joseph especially started talking about things that he observed with amira's game and mm-hmm. things that she had said that sort of you know lead him to believe that she could have been behind most of it and then couple that with the information that we have from kyle um around an alliance that was formed outside of the seven other people in the house and realizing that both of those things seem to be leading towards, Hey, there's something happening on the other side. We said, yo, let's, let's form this pound, but then let's also rally up Michael, Brittany and Taylor to make this a, um, you know, a real deal because we're going to need more numbers to, to, to make it to the end. Now, how did you shift your game from, because it seemed like you were actually targeting like, Brittany, Michael, Taylor, before you guys formed the leftovers. So now you bring your targets into your alliance. How were, was that something that you were planning? Like, did you just totally change from, okay, these are not my targets or they're going to still be my targets because they're at the bottom, but they're at the bottom of the leftovers and we're going to work together. How did you change your, your strategy from these being your targets to now these being in your alliance, these people being in your alliance? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was something that was definitely a concern, especially once we formed the pound, because it was like, all right, are they going to believe us? Mm -hmm. You know, like, are they going to believe that um, this is real, that we should all work together? Kyle had a pretty good understanding of Michael's game and had a pretty good relationship with him. So once the idea was proposed and we got the the green light from Michael, we figured that that would be the green light from Brittany as well because she was so close to him in the game. And then on top of that, we also knew that Taylor was pretty close to the both of them as well. 
Um, and I think by that point, when I'm thinking about week three, um, Taylor and I had had some conversations where we sort of cleared the air. We didn't go through like everything step by step on what happened during re- week one. Um, but we had gotten to a point where we were starting to talk a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, friend to friend, but also player to player. And by that point, she felt pretty confident. I think the whole house felt pretty confident that she was going to be the target that week, um, just based off of what Nicole and Daniel were, were pushing very strongly at that time. Um, and the fact that she had been on the block, I think, the week before and the week prior. So, um I think when we approached all three of them with that that conversation and with that proposal for the alliance, um, in my head, it was like, all right, this is the only logical Mm -hmm. thing that we can do to survive or else we're just going to be picked off when the people that we're choosing not to work with because of like past, you know, grievances, um, you know, we're choosing not to work with them just because of that history. So you got to push that stuff to the side and say, yeah. look, I, I, I need the path moving forward. Now, at that point in your game, who were you closest to? Like, in your mind, who did you want to definitely work with? Who did you see yourself going to the end with? I saw I saw myself going to the end with either Joseph or Kyle. Those were the two guys that I felt like I spoke the most to about mm-hmm. my game. Like they had they had my game in their mm-hmm. hands, you know what I mean? And um, I would would have liked to say vice versa. Um, but I think with Kyle, there was some things going on with Alyssa, especially as he got closer to her that, mm-hmm. you know, made him maybe shift his priorities. But um, but yeah, th- those two guys at that point were the ones I was talking the most game with. And then after that week, I'd say Turner and I got very close as well. Um, since he was HOA, since he had to go through, you know, what do I say, you know, during the speech, uh, you know, when, when I announced the replacement nominees, we just had a lot of those conversations and, um, and got closer at that point too. So it's interesting you brought up Kyle and Alyssa because that week that, um, Daniel was trying to warn Nicole, um, about using the veto, Alyssa was on the block, right? Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. she could have possibly gone home. And then that whole situation with Kyle um, may not have even happened mm-hmm. if Alyssa would not have been there. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 let's let's go into that. I'm I'm going to skip around. Well, that's okay. I'll wait. I'll, go ahead. What were you about to say? No, no. I I mean I agree with with everything that you said. Like um, the reason why you know we wanted Indy and Alyssa to stay on the block was because all of the festy bestie pairs mm-hmm. or trios, whatever there, there was, um, we all had members of the leftover alliance within those those uh, Festi Besties, including somebody else. But since Michael and Brittany were the only Festi Bestie pair that didn't have somebody outside of the alliance in it, we felt like we were exposed because if they were on the block, then one of them was going home for sure. Whereas if me, Joseph, and Terrence are on the block, we have the numbers to vote out Terrence instead of me or Joseph. So that was the whole reason why we wanted to have them stay up on the block so that we can convince whoever was left from that week to join Michael and Brittany in their Festi Bestie. Okay. So this is after you guys have found out about like the girls, girls Alliance, right? Or there's. Well, you know, Tiffany, I don't know if I really was clued in to everything that happened with the girls, girls Alliance until like big bro Chella. You know, okay. like I didn't know if it was a real I knew the girls were tight, but I, I didn't know if it was like a real organized thing up until Big Bro Cello. Like so let that me whole ask you, are, why are guys. OK, first, let me ask you, if girls are working together, does that make the guys a little apprehensive? Does that put a little fear in the guys to think that there is an all girls alliance somewhere? Well, I think the first week. There was a lot of, well, no, the second week, I should say, there was a lot of suspicion of it because I think by that time we had gotten to know a lot of the women in the house mm-hmm. and they had talked about the history of the game mm-hmm. being very, very male dominated, um, completely understandable. And those are just facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then couple that with Jasmine's HOH, where there were a lot of meetings in her mm-hmm. HOH room that seemed like they were closed door, you know, and when, when a guy walked in, it got real quiet. You know, and everybody knows that feeling in the big brother house when mm-hmm. you get talked about. So mm-hmm. um, at that point, I think there was um, a lot more of a raised suspicion. 
around the girls possibly working together. But I didn't, you know, from my perspective, I didn't know that it was called Girls Girls. Yeah. I didn't know if it was official or not and all that sort of stuff. I think as a girl, I'm just wondering, why are you guys always scared when you hear about a girl's alliance? Like, <laughs> y'all, but guys have, uh, you just said we had Oasis, which was all guys. We had The Pound, mm-hmm. which was all guys. As a girl, an all guys alliance t- terrifies me because it's already hard for us to beat guys in these competitions. But as soon as guys hear that there's a girl's alliance somewhere, Y'all start running around like it's the end of the world. Like, oh, my God, they're going to kick us out. Like, how, Sway? This, we obviously have to work together. Y'all get so right. terrified. Every single season, there's a, a, a word of an all-girls alliance going around. The men just start scrambling. Like, we got artillery somewhere, and we about to just go ham. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, look, I think for me, it's whenever I hear any alliance, you know what I mean? And especially when um, this season – Man, I mean, there was a great job of casting because there were a lot of very smart mm-hmm. and just like go-getter type of personalities, mm-hmm. not only as a house in general, but specifically the women in this house. So just I competitive, think, um, all competitive just nature, competitive nature and just, you know, from their, their backgrounds to the energy that they brought in the house. I don't know. I, it's it's not it's not to say that there was a reason to to be feared, but we respected their game that okay. much that we were like, all right, they're not just going to sit here and do nothing, okay. you know. Like they they they're playing the game, you know. I mean, women are to be feared. I just wanted to understand why <laughs> you guys were fearful. Um, right. So getting into the split house twist, when the house splits, um, and you were you were picked by Michael. <laughs> So you got you, mm-hmm. Michael, Jasmine, Brittany, um, Taylor, all on all in the house. Mm-hmm. What were you thinking about was going on outside? Did you know who would possibly not return into the house? And who were you hoping would and who were you hoping would not? Yeah, I mean, at that point. For the sake of keeping the leftovers together, I was hoping that Alyssa would have been evicted that week, that there was some way that Terrence could be convinced to to put her up on the block. But I knew in all likelihood, um, Terrence had started to get very sus- suspicious of Joseph and Kyle working with, you know, the other side of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Joseph was playing up the fact that we weren't close, that we weren't mm-hmm. having game talks and that he didn't really care about me. And I think Terrence saw right through that. And then with Kyle, I know that Terrence was really looking for Kyle to use the power of veto the week before. So Taylor could put up a big target, either me, Joseph or whoever. And um, the fact that he didn't use the power of veto made him suspicious of him. So I thought that either Joseph or Kyle would not likely be there the following week. And it turns out it was Joseph. Did you ever foresee Kyle spilling the leftovers to Terrence during Dire Fest? No, no, I didn't foresee that. Um, the week before, things were definitely weird because um, Kyle was very adamant about not using the power of veto so that Alyssa doesn't go up on the block. Um, and, you know, his reasoning was somewhat founded, but I think he also had a lot of alibis to get out of that um, so that he wouldn't take direct responsibility for it, at least you know, from my perspective. So after, you know, he told the the, uh, the leftovers alliance that he didn't want to use a power veto, you could tell that, like, I definitely felt like there was some distance between us. And I it wasn't created by me. Like, I can feel it from Kyle's end. Um, so I, I thought that, like, we needed to have a conversation when we got back together, like, mm-hmm. just to, you know, reassure some things. Um, but to see that he, you know, spilled the beans to mm-hmm. Terrence and, you know, apparently left Joseph and Turner out of the loop, like mm-hmm. just to save his own game. I mean, it was a it was a strong game move, but um, not something that builds a lot of trust with me, though. So, yeah. do you think that Kyle? You said Kyle. There was some distance being um, spread there prior to Dire Fest, and then mm-hmm. Dire Fest occurs. Kyle spills the leftovers. You guys come back together. Joseph's gone. Leftovers have been exposed and then kind of after that Michael and Brittany bring to you and Taylor attention your attention that 
Kyle mm-hmm. has been having these theories about some background specific mm-hmm. commonality alliance, people of color alliance going on. A um, couple of questions. I'm going to try to not make it so that you have to answer like three questions at one time. But mm-hmm. do you think that Kyle was putting that together prior to um, Dire Fest and that was the distance or was that unrelated? Um, mm-hmm. And then I do want to ask you what your thoughts were, if you can, because we didn't get to see that conversation on the live mm-hmm. feeds that when Michael and Brittany pulled you and Taylor into the have not room to have that conversation, mm-hmm. would you feel comfortable walking me through that conversation and how you felt about it at that time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure thing. Sure thing. So um, just, just to remember the first question was, do I think that Kyle was distancing um, himself because of his theories around the Alliance? Um, naturally I would like to say no. Mm. Um, I won't leave out that possibility, but because again, you know, we're all playing a game here. The only thing I'll say is that I think before the week of Taylor's HOH and before anything around Alyssa was mentioned, I didn't get any indications that Kyle was, you know, looking to distance himself or anything of that nature. So once I think the target became Alyssa Mm -hmm. and his hand could play into that. I think that's when things went left Mm -hmm. um, where like we just weren't, we weren't connecting and obviously, you know, he was being told certain, and I still haven't watched it all back, but Mm -hmm. apparently he was being told things by Michael and Brittany that made him feel comfortable about that. But then Michael and Brittany were coming to us, making us feel like, you know, Alyssa should be the target this week. Right. So, at that time, yeah, I they, think they that were they were playing both sides. They were playing so both know. sides, yeah. yeah, and it was pretty obvious. Um, but I think that that was his main driver behind it was his relationship with Alyssa and wanting to make sure that he did as much as he could to keep her in the house. Mm-hmm. And I think, fortunately, you know, and again, this is just my opinion on it. I don't know what the fact is, but I think unfortunately that thought process l- led him to think of what he could possibly do to mm-hmm. make that happen. Okay. And lo and behold, you know, that, that comes up. Um, and then what was the second question? Tiffany? So Sorry. Michael and Brittany wake you guys up one morning yes. and yep. bring okay. you upstairs to mm-hmm. um, clue you in to this theory that has Michael has, I'm sorry, that Kyle has been floating around about people of a certain demographic, possibly working together mm-hmm. and them um, needing to maybe work together on their own. Uh, against mm-hmm. these people with uh, common backgrounds. Um, mm-hmm. w- how did that conversation go? And what were you thinking? Yeah, well, uh, like to give you some context, I was woken up in the middle of my slumber to to have this sort of <laughs> conversation slumber. out of nowhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like I was, I was slumped. Um, so I was sort of half awake while I was listening to all of this. But um, yeah, Michael and Brittany pretty much just said that, you know, Kyle and the two of them or the two of them had been approached by Kyle about, um, you know, forming an alliance. Um, and they specifically said an all white alliance. Right. Mm-hmm. And they, they mentioned how uncomfortable they felt sharing this information, this, that and the third. And, um, you know, I think Taylor and I are both just like you know, sort of in shock when we hear it because Cause you had no idea, no idea, no, okay. no indication that that would be a thing. You know, like I, I could see them saying something around like, you know, uh, him trying to form something with Alyssa mm-hmm. and other people, but not something that was, you know, rooted in race. Okay. Um, so I immediately just start asking questions like, okay, how long has this been going on? Um, and that's when they share that they had been approached by him, you know, a couple of weeks back mm-hmm. uh, with him saying certain things and sharing certain thoughts. Um, and then I just start to, like, understand, like, OK, what's what's been the hold up with this information being shared? You know, because I'm assuming you're sharing this out of your the goodness of your heart. Right. Um, and I'm not thinking that, like, it's like a game move at that time. So, you know, they go through their explanation of why they felt like they wanted to get their reassurances about it before they shared it with us. And I'm already starting to see, like, 
some things aren't really adding up, but either way, I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, so then I think at some point they ask us like, what do we want to do about it? Hmm. And to put a feeler out there, because like, I wasn't really sure like what the point of all of this was, but it became very clear once I made a proposal. So I would, I still at that point, you know, I didn't care who was out. Like I wanted you know, Terrence and Alyssa to be put up as replacement nominees, whatever have you. And I also didn't know how much Turner had knew about all of this either. So I was like, well, you know, like, what if, and this is not how I truly felt, but I just put it out there to see what they would say. I said, what if we just, you know, put up Terrence as a, or convince Turner to put up Terrence or Alyssa as a replacement nominee, keep this information to ourselves, and then use this for the following week as a reason why we can put up Kyle on the block, right? Okay. Something like that. Um, just to see what they would say. What and at that point, that's, and at that point, it became very clear what the intention was around sharing this information where they were like, oh, well, you know, that's fine. Um, we were thinking that we could share this information with Turner um, because we don't suspect that he would know. And hopefully, you know, he would put up Kyle as a replacement on me. And then at that point, I realized, oh, this is this is a game move. You know, this is not just like a, a random I'm sharing because of, you know. Yeah, we've this, made a connection. You're my friend. I feel like morally yeah. this should be known and it's weighing on my conscience yeah. and I feel bad that I haven't told you. And it's just OK. So you are so you leave the room with mm -hmm. the with the thoughts that the intention behind the conversation with Michael and Brittany mm -hmm. was a game move for them to get Kyle on the block? I think leaving that room, I felt a little odd about it. And then once I started talking through it with other people that day, it became very clear. You know, once you start like hashing out, like, wait a minute, they knew this two weeks ago, they didn't say anything then. Mm -hmm. Taylor and I were in Big Brochella with them. They didn't say anything then. They didn't say anything this entire week up until Michael wins the power of veto and has a reassurance that he'll take down Brittany and they're safe. So it's like, all right, this is like perfect timing for them to share this information that could lead to somebody else um, being up on the block, you know, excluding myself, which yeah, was beneficial to me that, mm -hmm. at that point because I could have been on the block that week and I could have been fighting for my life. But um, the way that it went down to say that it wasn't a gay move in the house made it even more suspicious. How does that, did that change your personal relationship with Michael and Brittany at all? Yeah. I mean, I think because like, I'm just, you know, for me personally in the game, I felt like I had put a lot of trust in them, mm -hmm. um, showed a lot of trust on my end, volunteering myself as a pawn for Michael twice when he won HOH, sharing any alliances that came up, outside of the leftovers alliance to, you know, again, just make sure that they knew, you know, we're coming into this incubator and we're keeping everything close and in house. Um, so to hear that they had information that not only affected me as a person, but mm -hmm. also my game and didn't share it for weeks on end. Um, and then only shared it when it was very convenient for them. Then, yeah, it, it definitely created some distance for, for me personally and from a game perspective. I can understand from a game perspective why it was done, but then to say to me, of all people, mm -hmm. somebody that I'm working with, that it wasn't a game move, I just wish they would have been a little bit more honest and transparent with me mm. or with Taylor about it being a game move and owned up to that. Yeah. Like, I think the fact that they didn't own that was something that um, that created more distance because it's like, you can't look me in the face and say this wasn't a game move. Like, what, what do I look like? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was my big thing. So, so here you have... Joseph, who was going to possibly go with you to the end, is gone. Mm -hmm. And now Kyle, mm -hmm. who you were looking to go to the end with you as well, is in jeopardy of leaving. And then Terrence kind of wanted to save Kyle. Um, and we, we watched each one of you have these private conversations with with mm -hmm. Kyle. And, you know, they were they were very emotional um, watching mm -hmm. the emotion. Uh, Terrence was rightfully so upset. And I, I totally understood that. Like I saw him upset. I saw you very hurt. And I saw Taylor very like understanding and forgiving. And it's so um, 
it, the, all of those emotions are totally normal and understandable. It was really painful to watch. Um, when you got emotional about it during your conversation with him, um, it personally affected me because I have a son and I sent my mm-hmm. son to a predominantly mm-hmm. white school. And I know he has friends that um, he connects with on a personal level and he's not thinking that they're thinking about their relationship in terms of race. And I'm like, I know that one day he's going to go through this, maybe not um, the specific situation, but I understood that it appeared as if you had a personal relationship with Kyle as your friend and mm-hmm. he's looking um, at you and it's as not even a personal relationship, but just a person of color working with other people of color just because of, mm-hmm. of that common uh, foundation. And so now you've got to readjust your game because Terrence wanted him to stay. Was there any point that you were considering him still staying after this news was brought to you? Or did you just know that he can't stay? He has to go. And I've got to readjust my my person to get to the end with. Oh, God, no. Yeah, there was no chance that I was going to let him stay that week. Okay. I mean, the fact that Terrence even brought it up, it kind of um, it kind of let me know where how far Terrence would go in the game, you know, hmm. to make sure that that certain things could happen Kudos to um, because to me, like it just, I just couldn't live with that in, in my consciousness. And then also like, okay, it, say if it wasn't race, say if it was something else that caused a lot of mistrust, like I still just couldn't trust Kyle. Like why, yeah. why would I keep him in the house when, you know, I just was told by Turner that he wanted to put me up as a replacement nominee. Mm-hmm. And again, like the optics are aligned with what we're hearing were his intentions you know, at that time, right? Like what his thoughts were rooted in. Um, so I was like, okay, all evidence was leading me to believe that this guy, if it ain't Michael, then it's me. So yeah. why would I keep him in the house? And then again, like just morally, I felt like what Terrence was saying around giving him a chance to figure it out in the <laughs> house, it just. It's not yeah, the place for that. Yeah, yeah. It just wasn't something that resonated with me. I didn't believe mm-hmm. that that. To be, he can he can learn in jury, you know. Like, yeah, at home. Learn outside. Yeah, Google. Yep. So now you've yep. got yep. to. So Kyle's leaving. Your the two people you thought were going to the end with you are gone. Now you've got mm-hmm. to readjust. Who and you know? I'll, I'll fast forward. You you guys. You and Turner. Well, I might be skipping. You have to readjust. I think I see you and Turner get closer. You both decide that Michael has to go. Uh, even though you mm-hmm. formed a final three with him, mm-hmm. you win the veto and you're like, no, Michael has to go. Mm-hmm. Who had you planned on going to the end with? At that point? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think for me, I, I was very fluid uh, throughout this year, like especially after coming back from Big Brochella. I didn't know who the hell to trust Tiffany. Like, I So that reset your game? Like that. That, re- that completely reset my game. Like mm-hmm. Turner, I wasn't sure about because I was like, this dude had a final two with somebody, you know, who I felt close with, who I mm-hmm. didn't have one with. But again, like that wasn't something that I had heard about. And now he's coming to me with a final two conveniently after his is exposed. So I was like, you know, I'm still not sure if I can trust him. Then I also felt like with the whole Joseph, Taylor, Brittany, and Michael having a final four before Big Brochella. And that not being shared with me, I just felt like I was the next convenient choice. So I was like, all right, I don't know if I can really trust these people either. Um, so it didn't really feel like I was very aware of everybody's game entirely as much as people were aware of my game, you know, at least in the alliance. So, you know, when that move, everything at that point, <laughs> to be honest with you, Tiffany, was just like, all right, it's, it's a matter of survival. And if Michael stays here another week, that means there's another chance he can play in a veto, another chance he can play in an HOH and be safe. We need to make sure that he's evicted this week. And I think the fact that everybody followed through with the plan um, showed me a lot of trust in them. And then also just with time, I had felt like Turner and Taylor would be being the most transparent with me about their games. Um, and also felt like they were strong enough competitors to where if they win HOH, it's highly likely and it's also highly likely that they won't put me on the block, which is what happened um, just based off of, you know, the relationships we formed in the house. 
Okay. So Michael leaves. You've got Turner, Alyssa, Taylor, Brittany, yourself. Were you thinking at that point, I can sit next to any one of these people and win? Or was there someone you felt like um, had a better chance of winning than you? Yeah, I definitely, from um, from a game perspective, I thought that Turner at that point, because I had only won my second HOH after that double eviction was the Horror Fest competition. So at that point, I had two HOHs and one veto. And Turner had three HOHs on his belt. And all three of his HOHs, he took out really big targets, being Amira, Kyle, and Michael. So I felt like if I sat next to him, then I was probably going to take the L just based off of like his game being mm-hmm. a lot more um, big threat heavy versus mine um, and him winning more competitions. Uh, so, yeah, that that's I didn't really feel too confident about, you know, sitting next to Turner. So when did Everybody you plan else, your final mm-hmm. two? Like when when did you plan that? Because we heard you say, Taylor, mm-hmm. you're my final two. When did you plan that? You know, I don't I don't know if it was a particular plan, Tiffany. Like <laughs> it was weird because I, I would. Was it before or after there. y'all connected? Oh, it was before. It was okay. before. I mean, because we had those conversations around, you know, having suspicions around Brittany. Okay. And, you know, while we were in Big Brochella, we had talked about having a final three between myself, her and Brittany. Okay. And at that point, once Brittany, like once I was starting to lose trust with her and wasn't sure if she would want to keep me in the house, that's when I started getting closer with Taylor and saying, hey, like, you know, as much as you've been close with Brittany throughout the season, like she's somebody that I don't feel like is going to be great for my game mm-hmm. um, because there's a strong chance she can win a mental comp. She's she's up as HOH and she can put me on the block quick, fast and in a hurry. And I'm sure that she can convince somebody to decide to vote me out as opposed to somebody else. So I just I felt like I was losing trust with Brittany. And at that point, that's when I was like, all right. Taylor is the person that I feel like has been the most transparent with me. And we already had this final three locked in. Mm -hmm. So I think at that point, that's when I started to realize, okay, this, this could be a path for, you know, the best chance of me sitting in one of those final two chairs and also, you know, winning the 750 K. Okay. So then Brittany leaves. Um, Mm -hmm. It's, it's down to the final three. Turner. Mm -hmm. Did you believe Turner was going to take you to final two? I felt like all indications from Turner were that he would. Okay. I thought that there was a possibility that he, you know, could make the best game move for himself and take somebody else or take okay. Taylor at that time. Um, but I just move off of people's actions, you know, like to me, his transparency, to me, his moves in the game that have been very dependent on a lot of the folks who he was working with um, and the, 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 reassurances that he had from the votes in the house. Like I felt like I was then his reassurance at that time, you know, that we had each other's backs and that we would take each other to the end. So but I did didn't. feel that way. But but you didn't. So so <laughs> so we wa okay. So we watched you and Taylor get very close. You guys went mm-hmm. from being like total opposite ends of the house to mm-hmm. meeting in the middle and then you two working very closely together. But then at some point in the middle of you guys working very closely together, it seems that some distance is created there. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it looks like the distance is coming from your end. Mm-hmm. So, and so, and if I'm, if I'm right, is, am I right? Is there distance being created by you with your relationship to Taylor? And was that personal? Was that game? Or was, you know, what what was that, you know, where you guys were close and then you seemed to pull back? And I'm at home watching, like, I'm thinking it's because they were intimate. Like, he's a guy. He went in there. He's like, hey, I needed to handle my business. Handle my business. I'm good here now. I'm checked out. Was I wrong? I think you were wrong. Okay. <laughs> I can be wrong sometimes. Tell me how I'm wrong. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so that, you know, it's a complex thing because I think from the beginning of the show, I had always told myself I wanted to avoid showmances. 
I didn't want that to be a part of my game because I knew the risk that was involved there. Um, but during that week, I think things became a little bit more complex, especially when there were like personal things that I felt like I wanted to, to, to talk to Taylor about and work through to mm -hmm. understand each other more as people mm -hmm. versus what was happening in the game, which is I have Turner, who is here in final three with me, who probably wants and needs every reassurance and was looking for every reassurance that I would take him well, up until that's the Brittany. end. Brittany. Brittany was looking and wanted every reassurance, but Turner wasn't too far, but go ahead. <laughs> Turner wasn't too far. When it came down to final three, <laughs> yeah. there were a lot of conversations where Turner would come up to me. He was like, you and me, dude, right? And yes. I'm like, yes. You no, know? you weren't. And, you were and, like, I don't know why you keep asking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was sorry because I, Tiffany, I'm not the best when it comes to lying. saying something. Yeah, like I, lying. Like I'm just like, there's something that you was avoid it. You definitely, av you try to avoid it at all costs. He's like, do you I think tried. I wouldn't take you, bro? And you're like, I believe that you you do what you said you're gonna do. <laughs> and he's like, are you gonna take me? You're like, we're gonna get there. You know, you know, we're gonna get like there. <laughs> We're going to get there. I said he is just trying not to lie. Turner, do you not see it? <laughs> yeah, I know. It I don't know if Turner got a sense or not, but like it was just something that was hard for me to do, especially to somebody who I felt like up until, you know, um, or starting from the whole big brochella Diafest split and coming back, I thought he had been the most transparent with me about everything that was happening. So it was hard, like just like morally to get to that point where I felt like, damn, like I got to you know and then on top of that i wanted to make sure that he felt reassured that i would take him so that he would take me you know so this is a little so bit this of this is where the distance comes and you're trying to yeah. it's a little gameplay where you're creating distance between you and taylor to reaffirm or reassure turner of the relationship you have with him for getting to the end yeah i think it's yeah it's still a two-pronged approach right like i definitely felt like all right, from a, a personal standpoint, there's some things that I want to work through with Taylor and I want to talk about that I feel like in the house probably just isn't the best place to talk about, given the fact that we were, you know, having all of these game conversations and all these game dynamics that could affect the way that I'm viewing things personally. So even when we did have those conversations, I'm still in the back of my mind trying to figure out like, okay, are we having this conversation like just strictly personal, like with no... Because in my head, that's how I'm approaching it. But I'm also not sure, like, from Taylor's perspective, like, is she thinking of this as, like, game? Like, is there anything that's, like, impacting the way that she's responding based off of what's best for her game? Okay. And that, to me, is when I realized, like, okay, I'm not going to get probably the, the, the most bang for my buck out of, like, really trying to work through this stuff with Taylor and staying close and, and you know, uh, maintaining that, like, really close relationship throughout that last week. And I was like, okay, we only have four days until finale. I, I, let's, let's just wait it out until we get outside of the house and then start having those conversations around personal where I'm not thinking that the game could be influencing our conversation. Then on top of that, I'm thinking, all right, I need to focus and make sure that I'm studying for everything that I need to within these last two competitions to make sure that I make it to those final two chairs. Then on top of that, Turner's in here, He's seeing that Taylor and I are getting closer, and you if he affirmed, has you, you, sort of, you, you affirmed it for him. Well, he had asked and he had seen. I mean, the thing is, is that in the car room and in, in the in the bubble room, like there's only so many places where you can be, and if you're not there by a certain time, people are making assumptions okay. and people. So are you felt you, the that you just needed to come clean to him. I felt like in that moment and I look, I haven't watched back the footage. Mm -hmm. So again, correct me if I am mm -hmm. like misspeaking in the moment when I was having these conversations with Turner, I can sense by either body language or by the way that when I would bring up Taylor or whatever, have you, how he would respond. Mm -hmm. And it felt like he was giving me that look like, okay, yo, all right, cool. You mm -hmm. know, like, but okay. he was, you know, there, there was something that he saw that I just hadn't said yet. Okay. So, at that point, I think I wanted to make sure that he didn't feel like this was another Kyle and Alyssa where I was going to do things in my game that were impacted by, you know, a romantic relationship. So 
at that point, that's when I felt like, all right, I can't sit here and just tell him like, yeah, man, I'm taking you to the end, but I'm getting really close with, you know, this pretty, this pretty young lady over here and that's not going to impact anything. So in that point, I felt like that was what was best for my game to try to create distance for, you know, that relationship with Turner mm-hmm. to make sure that I was set up. At Did the you best in the final. have a conversation with Taylor at some point? Like, hey, I don't want Turner getting wind of this. I'm going to try to create a little distance between us, but I'm still right here. Because we saw you have the conversation with her in the bathroom. And to me, I was like, oh, he's completely checked out. It seemed like she was being very vulnerable. She was expressing how she felt. Um, but and, and not to take anything away from anyone, I recognized mm-hmm that we are playing a game. And in the house, we are always playing a game. And so it can be personal and I can have personal feelings about something and I can be personally attached and emotionally attached. But at the end of the day, it is still a game. So even my tears can be game and my relationship can be game. Mm -hmm. You seemed really checked out in the bathroom and I was, um, listen, I said, forget this man. He can go. Mm-hmm. Um, where where was your head with that? And I and I know we don't have a lot of time and my tuners may be going like my listeners and my viewers are like, why are they rushing through this? Um, Monty does have uh, many things to do. So I'm trying to get as much of him as I can right now in this time. But um, I do want to kind of get closer to your end game. But I just wanted to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. So what was going through my head at that time was I wanted to understand Taylor more from a personal standpoint. Right. Like this Mm -hmm. was as much as I can stress this, I will. This was a conversation that was centered out of caring for somebody and wanting to learn more, because if I didn't care, Mm -hmm. then I just would have never brought it up. I just would have ignored the situation and just distanced myself. But the fact that I cared made me want to ask questions and made me want to learn and understand, but then also see if I can help if there was something that somebody wasn't aware of. And at that point, I thought that, you know, it would be best to ask, you know, where her head was at, like during these times where I felt like, you know, I was hurt, you know, in our relationship, you know, just in the way that we were communicating. And I think that was a conversation where we had gotten a better understanding of where we were. Did you say you were hurt? Did you tell her you were hurt? Because that's the hard thing for us as I mean, I know a lot of people have issues, but in the black community, it's hard for us. We can express our hurt in different ways, but it's not we don't usually say, excuse me, um, I'm hurt. Did you say that? Yeah. in that conversation, I believe I did, because, you know, that's what I think Taylor then apologized for. It's like, I'm sorry if that hurt you. Um, And she didn't realize that at that time. So I think that was made clear. Um, but I think even after that conversation and and coming to the end, again, like, it's still hard for me to separate game from the conversation because I'm like, okay, I want to believe everything that you're saying and Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that, um, you know, I'm getting to know you and understand you more as a person, but I'm still wondering if game is influencing this conversation at all. And I start to realize that towards the end and, and start to ponder upon that. So I'm like, okay. First of all, like as a person, I just feel like maybe I just need some time to keep reflecting on all of this to try to get my head straight on if if this is making sense from like a personal standpoint. And then also is game influencing it and then also just needing some space for myself like that was just my process. So I didn't feel like I was, um, you know, like checked out or anything by that point. Just me just trying to understand what made sense for me moving forward. And that was what I felt like made the most sense at that time. Okay. So although you had a personal relationship, you needed to kind of put your personal relationship secondary and put your game primary yep. and start yep. thinking about how I can get to the end. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So then you, so then, all right, now it's down to final three. It's, it's you, Taylor Turner. Mm-hmm. You choose to go, you win part, Turner won part one, you won part mm-hmm. two. Yep. Um, I was really nervous. I said, I don't know if she's going to make it into those final two seats. Mm-hmm. You seem like you had your mind made up a long time ago. You decide to take Taylor. Why? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I just thought that um, 
the way the jury would look at the two people sitting in those chairs would be based off of a lot of game moves and what people have done socially in the game. So from my perspective, just being in that house and seeing things the way that I saw it, that's how I thought the jury would sort of evaluate, like who would, 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 you know, be the winner for this year. So I thought with Turner and myself, our games were very similar. Like he had taken out a lot of big threats. We won a similar amount of competitions. I, you know, edged him slightly towards the end, but I didn't feel like it was a clear cut. Okay. There's a big separation between our games. Whereas with Taylor, I felt like the margin between our games was a little bit greater where I had won more competitions. I've been on the block less taking out bigger threats. And I thought with all of the super fans who were in that jury house, that would be like the biggest thing that they would take into consideration. Um, so that's why I chose Taylor was because I literally thought that our games were just, um, there was a lot, there was more margin between my game and hers versus my game and Turner's. So I just wanted to make the decision on the jury easier in my mind at that point. Mm -hmm. But I completely overlooked Taylor's journey throughout this game, mm -hmm. how that would resonate with the jury, also, how well she would communicate that to the jury, which she always does. She mm -hmm. always is a great, excellent communicator. Um, and I think that was the part that was completely overlooked. That I didn't even consider. My last question is, what were what had you planned to convey to the jury to solidify you as the winner besides your competition wins how did you plan to convey your journey to them to allow them to see that you were the most deserving winner of that season mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think that um to be honest with you a lot of what you had just said around competitions around being on the block around taking out bigger threats that was the base of my argument like that okay. was just to me, what I felt like the most logical thing, and I'm I'm a very, you know, my mind is sort of black and white yeah. <laughs> at times. There's mm -hmm. not too much of a gray area, yeah. and that's something maybe I need to work on. But yes. um, my oh, mindset was so. very, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my, my mindset was very much centered around, like, just keeping it to the facts, keeping it very logical. Um, but my also the biggest part was, like, who do you feel like you want to, to res represent season 24 based off of the type of game that they played. Mm -hmm. And to me, I didn't feel like my game was as backstabby or as manipulative as, you know, past seasons, or maybe even some of the folks who were in this house, just based off of how loyal I had been to the alliances I was in. And also the fact that I never ran anybody amok who I wasn't work working with, right? Mm -hmm. Like there were people who were, you know, saying that they were working with other people. And then eventually when a vote came out and that person was on the block, they had to vote him out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't do that. You know, I never yeah. said. You played like, a clean yeah. game. Right. It's so I thought that that was, that was, that was the biggest thing I um, wanted to communicate with them. Final thoughts, Monty. What is it that you'd like um, anyone who's listening that may not know, what would you like to give them? What, what do you like want to leave people with? Um, who is Monty and what would you like them to take away from this about you that they, whatever feelings they may have misunderstood uh, you mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something you want to confirm your final thoughts? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, I, you know, first thing I'd want to say is thank you for everybody who watched. Apparently we, we did very well this season and um, to be a part of that means a lot to me. So seeing that people were like tag or tuning in to our journey and actually caring and spending their hard earned time to, to do that, that to me means a lot. But for the folks who are out there who had watched this season, you know, I've definitely come to learn more about the season than I knew being inside of that house. And I would also say that, you know, being in that situation, there's a lot of things that are done that, Tiffany, you would understand are for the best of your game, right? Like for you to make sure that you can advance and survive every week. Um, and knowing that, of course, I tried to be as true to myself as possible. And that's why I told you, like, I just was not good at lying. I was not good at, you know, trying to play, you know, one way versus another. Like I would really try to hold back from saying things that, you know, would later incriminate me. So um, that was who I was, but I do realize that there were some things, you know, outside of maybe what I would typically do outside of the house that I did in the house 
to try to survive and to try to make it throughout this game. So I would hope that people understand that. I know, Tiffany, you do, and other folks who have been in the house, um, been in the Big Brother house would understand and get. Um, but just having that respect around, you know, understanding that this is a game that we were playing and that a lot of the things that were happening there, you know, is not a representation of a lot of people's characters outside of the house. Mm -hmm. And I can attest to that by the fact that I've been hanging out with so many house guests afterwards and how close we've gotten and how much we've talked through everything that's happened this season. So, um, again, I hope everybody enjoyed the season. I'm sure it was entertaining. Um, but whatever happened in that house, I just hope that it's not a permanent representation of what everybody um, truly is on the outside world. OK, um, thank you for joining me. I do think that being with your cast after is is kind of therapeutic. So um, I think it's a great opportunity for you to learn each other outside of of the game. And if everyone can kind of talk through those things and work it out, it's a great family. Welcome to the BB community. Um, I'm sure that you will have more conversations with alum and just hopefully you're open to being receptive to some of the um, constructive criticism or the accolades that you receive. I uh, had I really enjoy you being here. We didn't get to talk about everything. I may even invite you back again. <laughs> I will see what my viewers have to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, thank you for your time. And I know we went over, so I won't keep you. To, I won't keep you longer than this. So thank you, Monty, for joining. Tell them where they tell our listeners where they can um, find you. Yeah, hundred percent. So thanks everybody who's tuned in. Hope you enjoyed this this interview. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram at T-A-Y-L-O-R-D underscore F-I-T underscore. So that's at Tailored Fit. Um, that's pretty much the main place that I'm at now. I will be launching um, my Cameo and my partnership with Cameo today. So stay tuned for all of that and more content that's coming out. So uh, as well as my online fitness coaching program that will be getting back up and running very shortly so stay tuned and make sure to click on the link in my bio if you would look if you are looking for any sort of help with your health and fitness goals so love respect appreciate everybody and again thank you for having me tiffany thank you thank you monty you guys know you can find me on the winner circle um you can also follow me at absolutely gorgeous 100 on instagram and absolutely tiff on twitter remember like subscribe and comment and i will see you guys next time thanks bye Thank <laughs> you.